Welcome to page three of your probability packet. This is lesson 1.3. We're going to be looking at some probability values and deciding if they're highly likely or highly unlikely based on the probability scale. Let's take a look at problem number one. It says which number represents the probability that is highly likely. Now let's take a moment and remember what the probability scale looks like. We know it starts at zero, which means an event is impossible, and it stretches to one, which means an event is absolutely certain. And in the middle, we have an even chance. Let's take a look at some of the values we've been given. We notice that choice C goes out to the hundreds place. And so does choice D. So let's make, for comparison's sake, this into 90 hundredths. And let's add a zero here to make choice A one and thirty hundredths. Now the comparison is going to be a little bit easier. Let's see where all of these values go on the probability scale. Choice A is one and thirty hundredths. That would lie here somewhere. That's not even on the probability scale and it's not even a valid choice. So cross off choice A. Let's go to choice B. That would be located approximately here. Choice C would be quite low on the probability scale. And choice D would be just about here. Remember, to be highly likely, you're close to the number one. So the best choice here is B. Let's read problem number two. Which number represents the probability that is highly unlikely? Once again, sketch a quick probability scale stretching from zero to one, and we know right in the middle we have an even chance. Take a look at the different probabilities you've been given. Notice that several of them go out to the hundreds place. So to make the comparison easier, let's add a zero in choice A and a zero to B. First of all, we look at B and we see a negative. If we had to plot that value, it would be below zero. Choice B is not even on the probability scale, so we can eliminate that right away. Let's plot our other possibilities. Choice A would be approximately here. Plot these with me, please. Choice C would be just about here. And choice D? is quite close to zero. And remember, the closer you get to the zero, the more unlikely an event is. So that would be choice D, highly unlikely. Let's move on to number three. Number three states, which number represents the probability that is highly likely? Well, we've been given four different fractions. And each of these fractions have different denominators, which makes it very difficult to compare them. So let's grab a calculator and convert each of these into their decimal equivalent. Let's divide. Choice A, grab a calculator, punch in four divided by five. 
you should have gotten 0.8. I'm going to add a zero and take it out to the hundreds place, just for comparison's sake. Now grab your calculator and punch in 9 divided by 5. You should have gotten 1.8, and let's add a zero. Letter C, 3 divided by 4. Many of you may know this one off the top of your head, but you should have gotten 75 hundredths. And lastly, this one you should know, but punch it in if you don't. 1 divided by 2. You should have gotten 0.5, and let's add a zero once again so we can compare. Let's draw the probability scale, which stretches from zero to the number one. Please take down these notes. And of course, an even chance right in the middle is 0.5 or 0 0.50. Now, take a look at choice B. 1.80 would plot off the chart. So we know this is impossible. It cannot be a probability. But let's plot the others. A would be approximately here. C would be just below it, approximately there. And of course, D would be here. Of those three, one of them has a stronger chance of occurring than the others. The closer we are to one, the more likely the chance. So it's choice A. And lastly, let's complete number four together. Which number represents the probability that is least likely? Once again, convert each of these to a decimal. Take a moment. 4 divided by 5. Punch that into your calculator. You should have gotten 0 0.80. The next one. 3 divided by 8. Punch that in. You should have gotten 0.375, 375 thousands. Let's add a zero here, just for comparison's sake. Letter C, 3 divided by 4, 0.75, and I'll add a zero. And lastly, punch in 2 divided by 3. That's a repeating decimal. You should have gotten 0.666. And let's put three dots, dot, dot, dot. It's a repeating decimal. So one last time, let's take a look. Sketch with me a probability scale, stretching from 0 to 1. We're looking for the least likely event. So we're looking for the event that has a probability that is the closest to zero. Letter A is approximately here. Letter B, 0.375, would be approximately here give or take a little bit of territory. Letter C would be approximately here. And letter D is approximately here, give or take a little bit to the left or to the right. But clearly, it is 0.375 that is 
the closest to zero. It would be the le least likely of them all. So your answer is choice B. This concludes page three. Make sure you're copying all the notes. Pause the video if you need to pause the video while you're watching it.